So now you and Tommy are in LA yeah. and you guys start hitting the nightclub circuit. Yeah. Mostly the and, black nightclub circuit in LA. Right. Right. And you said that that kind of became your core audience initially. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, because we both came out of black neighborhoods, you know, me in, in South Central LA and, and Tommy with Motown and his first wife was black and his kids. And uh, uh, so we were very, you know, in deep in the, in the black community, you know, so we, and so our humor kind of, some parts of our humor evolved out of that. And so it was when we were playing uh, uh, clubs in LA, they had that old format, you know, a professional MC would come out and introduce a professional comedian who would, introduced this floor show of whatever group was in there. So we fit right into that format, you know. So we mostly played black clubs. And and then on, on our Mondays, we played the Hootenanny, I don't know, the, the, the Troubadour on Hootenanny Night in L.A. And that's where, that's where you could actually get a record contract out of there. Okay, now playing in black clubs, I mean, they really embrace you if they love you. But if you bomb... You know, if you look like the Apollo, they're they're absolutely brutal. Like, have you ever been, you know, booed off stage or bombed on stage during Not this time? Not by those people. <laughs> no, never. Oh, the one time we played a Scientology meeting, something. Okay. I've never been stared at like that before in my life. And it's like everybody in the audience was like, <laughs> hello, hi, we're funny up here, you know. <laughs> so we, we, we stayed away from that. Okay, so you're doing these clubs in L.A., and that ultimately led to your first album deal. Mm -hmm. How did you guys get that deal? Because, I mean, back then, comedy albums were definitely more of a thing than they are now. Oh, uh, but yeah, they were just starting to come. I mean, they had a re they had a wave right before us, like Lenny Bruce and Mort Saul and all those kind of guys. Annie Youngman, uh, not Annie, was, uh, oh, any of the guys. But uh, and they were they were just starting up a group of us that, that, that came out of uh, uh, Richard Pryor. Uh, uh, George Carlin, Lily Tomlin, Steve Martin was just a few weeks behind. And then us, who we got a record contract out of the Troubadour because his very f famous record producer, who was actually the biggest record producer in the world at the time, Lou Adler, saw us. And he is from Boyle Heights in, 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 in East L.A. So he, he got what we were doing right away. And so he, uh, he offered us a record contract. And so we said, okay. Sounds good. How much? How much do we get? <laughs> and so he says, "Well, how much do you need?" He says, "Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a thousand dollars." And Tommy starts reaching for the pen. I said, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute. I'll talk to my partner here." I said, "Well, Mister Adler, we we, we uh, since there's two of us, uh, we'll, we'll need two thousand dollars." And he laughs. Okay, <laughs> and that's how it started. Yeah. Okay, you signed your first record deal for a thousand dollars each. Yeah. Okay. Because we needed a car. <laughs> you needed a car. Yeah. Okay. So you guys dropped your first comedy album, uh -huh. self-titled, Cheech and Chong. And that's got the famous Dave's Not Here skit. Yep. How'd you guys come up with that skit? <laughs> By accident. <laughs> we were different than all of our, all of our other contemporaries uh, because their records consisted of a recording of their live act. You know them on stage and the audience, and and that's not what we did. We went into the studio and did bits, you know, that were that could take advantage of being a studio musician, which we were. You know, it's like we went, we approached it like doing a music album, and so we, yeah, when we first started, they only had four tracks, and then and pretty soon they had eight, and then thirty-two, and you know, hey, let's fill this up with, with sound effects and you know other voices and blah blah blah. And so we started doing that. So our 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 albums were very much uh, uh, different than everybody else's. So the Dave thing came out of we were we were rehearsing a bit, and 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 we were, it was summer and it was hot. It was like August and it was just really hot. And so it's and I was supposed to be this guy that came to the door, knocked on the door. He's supposed to say, come in, and we're supposed to start this bit. And so <laughs> Tommy Chong, special. Uh, so he says, hey, Mumachin, you know, get into the road. Wear that big coat and that hat and send in. And then when you knock on the door, I said, yeah, okay. What the so I, I got it on. I'm going to knock on the door. I'm knocking. And he's he's got this little uh, uh, recorder going there, and he's trying to see if the needle's working, you know. And, he, so I knock, and he's going, uh, who is it? just to see if it, it was registering. 
And and I, who is it? You're not supposed to say who is it. You're supposed to say come in, and we're supposed to. And the, and I so I knocked again. Who is it? It's, and so it's just that's so why I just guy fell into character. Uh, it's me, uh, Dave. And so now Tommy gets it that he has a chance to fuck with me, <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. He started going, Dave, Dave, yeah, and he, and Dave's not here. And that's how it came up. And. And I was pissed when he finally opened the door because he said, hey, man, it's hot out here. What the hell are you doing? And he's laughing his ass. I said, you got to hear this. And this is the, so he plays it back. Uh, and, and I fell on the floor laughing because he was. we took it up to Lou. He fell on the floor laughing too. Okay, let's make more of these. This, this is good. You know, That was our first bet ever. Really? And, okay, and yeah. It's basically you saying, you know, hey, you know, it's Dave. You know, let me in. I think the cops are following me. I got the stuff on me. Yeah. And Tommy's like, who? Dave's not here. <laughs> <laughs> just keep knocking. Yo, man, let me in. Let me in. <laughs> you wanted to more kill more him. Frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a, it was a, the simple riff that was, got, it became universal. Everybody, you know, and, and anybody, I, I pity anybody was named Dave during that period, man, because they heard that all the time. Okay. I mean, was that based on any sort of reality? I mean, did you guys ever have drug problems back then or no. police busting you or nothing? Or no. is it just all comedy? No, it was all comedy. All the comedy. Police loved us. As a matter of fact, mm. when we got to be known and had albums, all, our cops were our biggest fans. Okay. Because they were involved right. in the same things that we were involved in, just the other mm. side of the street, you know? Kind of. Right. Okay. So this album comes out. And it gets to number 28 on the Billboard 200. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. For a comedy album, yeah. That didn't have a right. hit single, you know, <laughs> or nothing like that. Yeah. It was like, because it was so different than everything else that was out there. Uh, you know, the, wow. We, and so the, the DJ started getting on it. And so when it, when the album came out, the first week we... We played at the Troubadour. We opened for Cannonball Adderley, and and it, but we got paid this time at the Troubadour. And this is good. And the next gig was in New York at the Bitter End, and uh, and and so we we did the first show, and it's the first time we performed outside of L.A. and and it went over pretty good, not as great as we did in L.A. And so our our PR guy from the label came up and says, "Why didn't you guys do Dave? That's the hit here." He says, what do you mean that's the hit here? So he says, well, every, every, all the DJs, we, any, good, any good things that come over, we, we share them with each other. And that's, that's a big hit. It only been out a week, the, the album. How can it be a hit? It doesn't even have any music on it. Like, no, it's a big hit here. Everybody's doing this Dave thing. Well, okay. So but we didn't know how to do it on stage because we had never performed it. We just did it. And so we said, well, how do, how do we do it on stage? And the guy says, do it in the dark. I go, wow, that's a brilliant idea. So we did it in the dark, you know, and just do it, knock, 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 who is it, you know? And it got over because New Yorkers related to paranoia more than they did anything else, you know? <laughs> and so, hey, we were a big hit in New York, you know? 